Hi, welcome to another video. So, AI agents are something that I really like to cover because they generally make AI more accessible and most of the time, they can do some really cool and useful stuff. Recently, I found out about another AI agent called GPT-Me. So, let's talk about it and we'll test it out as well. This is an open source project that claims to be a personal AI assistant with tools in your terminal. It allows you to use the terminal, run code, edit files, browse the web, use vision, and much more stuff like this. It claims to be an unconstrained local alternative to ChatGPT's code interpreter. So, basically, it's more like Open Interpreter, and it can generally use the tools at its disposal to execute tasks like executing code, searching the web, and stuff like that. You can also use it with local models as well. If we look at the exact features it has, you can see that it can execute code in your local environment with the shell and Python tools. It can also read, write, and change files, as well as search and browse the web. It can even control a whole browser via Playwright, which is also very cool. It also has vision compatibility, so it can see images referenced in prompts, screenshots of your desktop, and web pages. It's self-correcting as well, like the Agent Q was. Apart from this, it also has support for several LLM providers, including OpenAI, Anthropic, OpenRouter, and local models via Llama CPP, as well as Olama. So, that's cool to see as well. It also seems to have many smaller features to ensure a great experience, including piping in context, tab completion, automatic naming of conversations, and it even has a basic REST API if you want to integrate it into your own application or something like that. So now, let's try it out and check it out as well. First of all, to get it installed, just run this pip install gptme command, and once you do that, it will get installed. Once that's done, we can use it as well. Just run the gptme command and it will get started. It will ask if you want to start a new conversation or resume the old one. Because we are new, we can just hit the new option here. Once you do that, it will ask you for an API key from either OpenAI, Anthropic, or OpenRouter. Just enter the API key from whichever you prefer. I'll enter it from OpenAI, and once you do that, it will get started with the provider whose API key you provided. Now, once that's done, we can ask it to do things, and it can do them. Let's start with something basic. Let's ask it to tell me the current time in Sweden. Okay, it's doing that now, and it has given us a shell command to execute. We'll need to approve this command before it can run. So, let's just give it a yes here. Once we do that, you can see we have the date and time here, which is also correct. So, this is a good start for it. Now, let's take it up a notch. Let's ask it to tell us the current stock price of NVIDIA. Let's send it and see. Okay, it's doing that now. Let's wait a bit here. And it's done. So, it didn't work in this case. It just said that it cannot do this. So, I guess this is a fail. Although it should have been able to do this, because it can do web searches and stuff. Anyway, their docs say that it can at least browse specific URLs and give data from there. So, let's give it this Reddit thread on why Rust is better than C and see if it can tell us what the post says. It's working on it now, and it's done. So, it wasn't able to do this either and just said that it cannot browse. I guess these lines should be removed from the README, or at least an unreliable mark should be put next to it. It says that it can even see screenshots of your desktop and web pages. But how, when it can't even browse the web? I mean, it's fine that it cannot do this, 
but it's not good to tell users about features that it cannot do. Anyway, let's move on. One feature that is mostly mentioned everywhere is that it can do coding. So, let's start with something simple first. Let's ask it to make a simple Minesweeper game using HTML, CSS, and JS. Let's see if it's able to do this or not. Okay, it's doing it now. Let's wait a bit. And it's done. So, it was able to do it this time. Let's try to run it and see if the code works or not. Okay, this works fine, which is pretty good. So, it can code pretty well. Let's see how well it can read files as well. Let's just open it up from scratch here so that it doesn't have any old context. Now, let's ask it to tell us about the code in the file that it just created in the previous thread. Okay, it's doing that now. And here's the response. This looks pretty good for sure. So, it can read files as well. Another thing it can do is search your past conversations with itself. So, if I ask it to tell me if I ever mentioned Minesweeper in my previous chats, it can do that. It can also run shell commands. So, you can ask it to give you an FFmpeg command, or maybe kill a process, and it can do that. Or it can also remove a directory, or change permissions and stuff like that. It can also run Python scripts directly. So, if you ask it something like, what is 2 plus 2? It will create a Python program for it, run it, and give you the correct information. Or it can do that in case you need the time, like it did when we asked it for the time in Sweden. Another thing it can do is handle images. So, if you ask it to tell you about an image and give it the path, it will attach it to the context and give you the details, which is also good. Also, you don't always need to run it in chat mode like this. You can also just run it as a CLI tool, give it your request, and it will reply with the answer. If it needs any approval, it will ask you for that. You can also use it with a pipe. So, you can give it the output of processes and ask it to end something like the NPM server or something like that. So, that's good as well. Apart from this, you'll also want to use it with Olama. To do that, first of all, make sure you have Olama installed. To do this, go to Olama's site, click the download button, select your operating system, and install it. Once it's installed, go to the models page and choose the model you want to use. I prefer using the Quen. 2.5 model. So, just go to the model, copy the command, and get it installed. Once it's installed, you'll need to install light LLM by running the command pip install light LLM. Now, just run a light LLM server with your Olama model like this. Once the light LLM server has started, create an environment variable with the OpenAI base URL pointing to the light LLM server. It's usually located at port 8000. After setting that up, you can start using it with the Olama model. You can also do the same with Gemini models by running a Gemini model or any other model via Light LLM in the same way. So, these are the major things you can do with this. I think this is a great tool to use for sure. This is one of the best, simple to use AI agents. It can do basic stuff like reading and editing files, as well as more complex tasks like coding, executing commands, and things like that. Although I don't know why the browser feature doesn't work, I hope that gets fixed soon, making this even better. Overall, it's pretty cool. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you liked this video, consider donating to my channel through the super thanks option below. Or you can also consider becoming a member by clicking the join button. Also, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, bye.